Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube video. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you 11 Python projects slash games that I've created over the many years that I've been using Python. Now all of these games are made with a module called Pygame. This allows you to make 2D games in Python. It's actually really powerful. Now the point of this video is going to be to give you some inspiration and motivation for things that you can work on in Python and show you the powers of Python when it comes to making simple 2D graphical user interfaces and little games and projects like I'm gonna show you here. So the last thing I'll say before we get started is right now there's actually new tech with Tim Merch out. I just released it. It looks something like this. This is one of the designs that I have and if you're on the computer you can actually go right beneath the YouTube video and you can see all of the different designs that are available. If you're on your phone or something there's a link in the description but if you would like to purchase this it definitely does help me out and I can say firsthand these are very comfortable hoodies and I think these designs look really awesome. So anyways with that being said let's go ahead and get started and look at 11 Python projects slash games. So the first game I have to show you here is actually my version of agar.io. So you can see immediately this is actually an online game. This is made completely with Python and Pygame, and the objective is to collect as much mass as possible without being eaten by another person. So they're five minute rounds, and essentially the way it works is the biggest person or the biggest blob out of all the blobs that are here at the end of the game is the winner. So what I actually did is I created this game because I worked as a STEM program coordinator at a summer camp, and my my kind of role there was to actually teach kids coding and kind of take on the technology side of the camp. So I wanted to make a game that all the kids could be able to play and have fun with and actually be able to see that, hey, I made this, this is something they could potentially make if they wanted to continue on with coding and keep learning. So anyways, I'll play a few clips of them playing this game, but yes, this is a fully online game. It works on your local area network, so you do have to be on the same uh, Wi-Fi network to actually play against each other. So this next game I have to show you guys is called Super Mini Golf. Now this is based off of one of my favorite games that I played as a kid on the App Store. It was called Super Stickman Mini Golf. And you can see that essentially the idea behind this game is you are a golf ball and you can shoot it around and you're trying to get it into the hole. So this works just like regular golf in terms of the scoring system. If you hit a water hazard, you get plus one strokes. There's some power ups in this top corner here. So we have power shot. Mulligan, which reverses your previous shot, and then Sticky Ball. So I'm going to go ahead and try with the Power Ball here and see if I can get that into the hole. Now I'm in putting mode and I can putt in. So you can see it tells us what our score is, brings up a scoreboard, and that is pretty much it for this game. I mean, there's a bunch of other levels. I'm not going to play through all of them, but we'll get into the rest of the games after a quick word from our sponsor. I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and introduce you all to their Data Scientist Master Program that was co-developed with IBM. This program is comprised of six unique courses that implement a unique blended learning experience in a high engagement online classroom environment. During this program, you will master 30 plus in-demand skills and work with tools and languages like R, SAS, Python, Tableau, Hadoop, and Spark. You'll master these skills through 15 real life projects and one capstone project during this 12 month comprehensive course. You'll also be given 1200 USD worth of IBM cloud credits to use during your 24 seven access to the IBM Watson platform. After completion of this course, you'll be given certificates from IBM and Simply Learn to testify to your skills as an expert in data science. Get started by hitting the link in the description. So the next game I have for us is a classic. This actually is probably the first Pi game project I ever worked on. You can see a nice, lovely green background. I don't know what I was thinking with that, uh, but you get the point here. It's just Hangman. You can guess different letters. I'm sure you all know kind of how this works. Let's see if we can actually get this word and then we'll move on to the next project. Uh, D, F, no, geez, it's not going well. S, okay. Uh, does anyone know what this word is? Because I do not. Maybe I'm just really bad at Hangman. M? No, it looks like we lost. The phrase was zoologist. Okay, I don't know how I was going to guess that. But anyways, you get it. Hangman generates a different word every time and a pretty cool project, especially for beginners looking to learn kind of how to use this module. So this next project is less of a game and more of just an illustration of something you can do with Pygame. So you can see that what this actually is, is a genetic algorithm that learns how to play Flappy Bird. So I generate a bunch of birds at the start and the idea is the best birds survive each next round and they slowly learn how to actually play this game. So I don't know if we'll have enough time for you to see a very successful bird that just can go through and do this infinitely, but the point is that I made this in Pygame, so this whole Flappy Bird thing, I just copied uh, the original Flappy Bird design 
design and made that and then even implemented all of the birds and the AI and yeah just something cool something fun and shows you that if you want to do some kind of AI stuff so like reinforcement learning or genetic algorithms and you want to visualize that a really cool way an easy way to do that is using the module like Pygame and it seems like this guy's actually doing fairly well and I'm pretty confident to say that he will probably make it through all of the tubes and actually never die in this game so the next game I have for you guys is actually online chess now I made this during an 18 hour live stream on YouTube yes I did live stream for 18 hours straight and this is actually a really cool game so I made some modifications to it here but you can see that one of these guys is white you can move his pieces and then it moves on the other screen and actually shows them where it moved so this is fully functioning chess um, this works just like any other chess game would and while it is a little bit laggy because you know I'm not a network specialist in terms of sending packets and data and all of that uh, but hopefully you get the point that this is just a cool online chess game and if you want to make something like this in Python you absolutely can it just is kind of difficult to do so anyways that's it for this you get the point there's timers going at the top although it doesn't even really look like they're working to be honest so maybe I broke something and yeah you can just play chess against someone else so this next one is a much more simple online game. This is online rock, paper, scissors. I actually have a full YouTube tutorial that teaches how to do this, but you get the point. Essentially, you pick something, the opponent's locked in, the other person picks something, and then tells you if you won or lost, and you continue to play. Now, I believe in the finished version of this, I actually implemented scores and some more fancy stuff and made it like centered and look a little bit nicer. But this is the version I had on my computer, so I just figured I would show it to you. If you want to make an online game in Python, it's actually not that hard to do and starting with something like this is really cool it teaches you how to use sockets how to use a little bit of networking features and stuff uh, and yeah just an interesting game and something that i wanted to show to you guys all right so the next program i have to show you here is actually my version of microsoft paint you can see that we can paint around here uh, and we can make whatever we want we can actually save files so i can go ahead and save and just make this say like test and go save and now if I wanted to like say I modify all this and I don't save it and I go open I can open test and it will bring me back to what I was at so I actually made you know kind some kind of protocol to actually save these different files let's see if I can actually fill some stuff in here so this might not work very well but let's see what happens yeah so it fills everything except those two shapes uh, so R sorry is the replace tool so I believe it replaces whatever color I click on with the other color so let's go back to R there uh, there's clear that clears the entire screen fill this will fill one color so you can see that will fill the entire screen and yeah look these are the features of this game or this project or whatever you want to call it and I think that it is pretty cool so the next game I have to show you all is actually my version of snake now I'm really bad at snake and this version is not that easy to play but you can see this is just really a simple game of snake that you can make in Python with Pygame again I have a full tutorial series that teaches how to do this not very difficult by any means but is definitely a cool game and something that's kind of fun to play around with and show different people so the next game I have here I believe is pronounced Stoku. I don't know if that's actually how you say it and I usually get roasted on my pronunciation for it but here is the game you can see it is just a simple version it generates a board here and you can actually just play the game so I can actually pencil in stuff by just only hitting it once on the square and then once you've put something in one of the squares you can press delete if you want to remove it or you can press enter to try to make it finalized now of course if it's not in the right place it will give you a little X at the bottom of the screen saying you got it wrong and let's say you know you've played the game you're really frustrated and you just want it to solve for you you don't want to have to play anymore what you can do is simply press space and this algorithm will actually automatically solve the board for you this uses a pretty popular backtracking algorithm and of course it's not going to be responding right when I'm filming the video but you get the point let's give it one second and we should see that it actually does complete the board and I don't think it made any mistakes I don't know you guys can have a look at this and let me know I made this a long time ago the next game I have here is Tetris this is a classic game I'm sure I don't need to explain this to any of you this is actually not that difficult to make again I have a video tutorial series going through how to actually create Tetris uh, but this is a fun game and it just really is the classic Tetris there's not much more to say the only things I didn't add from original Tetris was the hard drop and the shadow it wouldn't be that difficult to do I could add that if I wanted to but just for the video tutorial series I didn't end up putting that in uh, but you can see the next shape popping up on the other hand of the screen there which is a nice feature and then of 
course, if you get to the top, you will lose, and we're not going to have enough time to show you that feature. So anyways, that is Tetris. Let's move on to the next game now. All right, so the last game I have to show you is actually a tower defense game. I made this during a 12-hour live stream on YouTube, and I'm sure many of you have seen this before. The idea is that you have all of these different towers that have different properties, so they might have a different range or a different damage that they do. You can upgrade these towers using stars that you collect from killing enemies from the waves. You can see here I've just fast-forwarded to wave 6 just to show you guys a more interesting stage of the game rather than the very beginning. But over on the right-hand bar here, you can buy all of the towers. Uh, there is different different towers that do different things and of course cost different amounts of money and then there is some music that I will play but that I doubt you will actually be able to hear. Uh, so anyways, we'll let this music play. I'm going to play around, and that is pretty much it for this video. I mean, this tower defense game took me a lot of time to make. Uh, 12 hours in, in the live stream was not easy. There's a lot of glitches with it, but it is really cool, and it shows you what you can do with Python. So anyways, that has been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.